so uh, now it's time to actually paint the model. Um, I, I'm going to do my best with the camera angle to try and make sure you can kind of see what I'm doing. Um, but I apologize, I don't have the best setup for this sort of thing. So there's one more tool that I didn't really talk about, um, and that's a palette. I normally use a wet palette because it's very convenient and wonderful to use. Um, and I recommend like looking up wet palettes if you if you um, are interested in doing more miniature painting. But uh, with a basic setup, really just any non-porous material. So here I have like a, a card sleeve with a white piece of paper in it. And so uh, that's a place for me to be able to put my paint and mix it or do whatever I want. So the first thing I want to do is mount my model onto my little stand. And this is just like a little spool of like hobby wood spool that I found at a craft store. Um, for a long time I just held the models in my hands, uh, but it turns out it's really, really nice to have something uh, that holds the models. So I use my sticky tack, get it a little bit tacky by uh, kneading it a bit, and then just try to jam the model in there. Alright, there we go. Alright, so how's that look? We've got a black miniature. It's totally spray painted and uh, now it's mounted on a handle so I won't like accidentally get fingerprints or wreck the paint. Alright, so the first thing I like to do is start with a little base coat and so for that I'm using Crix Bane Base and I've, I've been really into this color lately. It's just like a really uh, sort of a greenish muddy gray and um, it gives me just like a really fun foundation color. So I'm going to use this big paintbrush and just cover the model in this green color. Uh, one useful thing to think about when you're painting your models is um, like to start with areas that it doesn't matter. Like if most of the model is this color, then I don't have to try and be specific about where I'm painting. Like one great thing about paint is that it can paint over itself. You know, it's not like watercolor where you've got to do it right the first time or markers or some something like that. Uh, you can layer it and really it only helps your painting uh, the more layers you add. So it looks like I got uh, some good green color on there. Um, sorry if you couldn't see very clearly, but really I'm just jamming that on there. Clean my paintbrush, and I'm going to be doing the like official uh, colors for the Dark Wanderers. Um, so with that, I'm going to get out the Thrall Flesh color, which uh, they wear like a light greenish armor and then like dark blue gray wraps. Um, I, I try to stay away from uh, making people think that they have to paint my models a certain way. That's one reason why I make the card art in black and white, and that's because I want people to be able to sort of choose how they fill those gaps, such as the color. But um, here I have a uh, this like pallid green color, and I'm going to paint the model. It seems like it might be a little bit wet there. So. This is really about uh, easy ways to paint your models if you're not a confident uh, miniature painter. Uh, this isn't like award-winning painting quality. This is um, enjoy your relaxing time painting your models without spending forever working on them. So see, I got uh, like that light green color on the armor and as you can see, I never once cared if I got that light color on any of the other parts. And in fact, one thing I want to do is try to lightly brush over everything with that color. And that's going to create like a 
uh, chiaroscuro effect, like kind of a, a, uh, it'll give the light and dark areas on everywhere that I want to paint, because what I'm going to do next is just do kind of a, a glaze or like a watery paint over, um, any areas I want to add color. So um, I think we've done what we want with this paintbrush. I'm going to switch to a more detailed brush. Um, but this is still uh, size 2. And um, one reason I like to paint with large brushes is one, because it's quite a bit faster. And then also, like, I'm, I'm uh, firmly in the school of John Singer Sargent, where he always tries to use, like, one size bigger than he would normally think to use. Um, and that, that helps you actually learn how to use the paintbrush better rather than relying on a very, very fine area to just like meticulously work. What you want is the skills to get built into your hand on how to really actually use your tools rather than um, scribble with a thin line. Anyways, that's painting theory that's not important. So. Um, I'm going to use Great Coat Gray. It's kind of a blue-gray color, and that's the color I want to add for uh, his wraps. He's got, like, um, cloth wraps on him, and so I'm going to use that color to get in there. So I add that to my palette. And then uh, one thing I was talking about before was just using some water, so I'm going to water it down a bit from my... Uh, jar of water that I'm using to clean my brush and everything. And so with this like watered down paint, um, what I'll be able to do is color the parts of the model, but like sort of the lights and darks that are underneath are going to be able to shine through a little bit. So it's not really like a wash, strictly speaking, but it's um, just sort of a lazy way of adding the lights and highlights without getting too crazy blending on every little part of the model. So now I want to be a little bit more specific on how I'm doing it because I actually don't want to get this gray color on any of his armor plates. But anything else that I'm planning on changing the color of, uh, I don't have to worry about. So uh, I don't have to worry about any of the bone or I think the little fur parts, I'm probably going to do a different color. Um, but in more general sense, when you're painting any model using this like sort of lazy technique, um, I would just sort of identify the different types of fabric or materials that are on the model. You know, there might be metals or um, leathers or different types of clothes and those major parts. Identify them and then sort of choose uh, how you want to like color them because uh, that coloring it's going to just bring out a little bit of detail. You see I watered it down a little bit and uh, you'll be able to see through the paint. And that's really something you would do in regular painting like if you're doing a painting of a landscape or whatever is you want to layer your paints and be able to see through transparent layering. And so that just translates into any kind of model painting in my opinion. So, um, my hands are shaking a bit. That's totally normal. Um, one thing you can do is just brace your hands against something. So here I'll brace my hand against my other hand, or, and then brace my arms against the table, and that just sort of helps stabilize it a little bit. It's not going to be perfect, but it's a way to be a little more steady with how you're using your hands. starting to fall off a little bit. Okay, so now we've got our gray blue color on there and um, now let's just pick out a few of the other details. So we've got a, uh, I got a 
this is Jackbone. I think this, a lot of these paints came in the like uh, Cricks set for from Privateer Press, and uh, so that's probably a good set to get for this uh, Bone and Darkness expansion where you're painting lots of uh, undead and uh, scary monsters and grim colors. So uh, here I've got like this bone color and I'm going to paint his face. So uh, get this light bone color. Now uh, part of the exercise here as I've mentioned before is for me to use like as few paints as possible. So I might use um, I might use like a different brown to pick out some of the other colors that are on the model but uh, instead of doing that what I'm gonna do is use just this uh, this bone color to get some of the other stuff. So I've got bones on the back definitely get this bone color. It's got a skull there like a jawbone here and here. Then let's see, is there anything else we can do this color? Um, here I'm bending this mace into place. Why don't we get his book this color? He's got a little book that he hangs on his belt. Presumably where he keeps all his evil spells. It might also be a diary. He might be like, Dear diary, today I killed four men in cold blood. Okay, so this is what our anti-hero looks like so far. He's got a little bit of bluish gray, a little bit of greenish gray, and some bone color. Um, I think one thing I'd like to do is alter our agreement a little by adding two more uh, colors. So I'm going to add like a brown and then um, in the artwork his mace is sort of like gr glowing so I'm going to add like a bright green color. Um, I think it'll be nice so let's do that. Okay so I have a uh, gun core brown and a uh, necrotite green. Um, so I'm going to start with the brown. Uh, there are just like a few little other like parts of the model that I think will come out nice to have uh, so this warm brown color on there. Just sort of breaks up the uh, the cold darkness that's the rest of the figure. So I'm going to give him brown slacks by working it carefully into those areas. Uh, he has a backpack. I'm going to give his backpack the same brown color. And I really think that that's just going to help sort of separate the, uh, the different areas of the model so that it'll make the bones stand out more and make the uh, dark cloth stand out more. It'll be nice to have the variation in uh, warm versus cool colors to help make it more interesting. And so on the book, I'm going to make the book brown also. So he'll have that variance on the front. I'll leave some parts that light color. We'll see. Maybe that'll be nice. Uh, one thing you might notice is that uh, I move the model as much or more than I move the paintbrush. One reason I do that is because like there's really only so many comfortable directions that my hand will move the paintbrush. And so if I can orient the model in the direction that the brush stroke is going to go because that's the way my hand moves, uh, it really saves a lot of the delicate work. Um, I, I just like plan around the way my body works rather than try to fight it and make my hand move in a weird way. And he's got some straps here. We'll make these brown. It'll be nice to have, like I said, just break up the uh, cool colors with some warm colors.
very nice super good paint job here all right so um, let's see what else I'm going to now grab this gray this is a Crixbane highlight uh, it works really well with the Crixbane base it's almost like they planned it and uh, I'm gonna put that on my palette and I'm going to add a bit of water and I'm going to just sort of paint onto the ground here. That might be too light. I don't know. I think it's a bit lighter than I want for the uh, ground. So I'm going to add the base. I'm going to sort of mix these colors and make it a little bit different. So I'm, I'm actually just painting the sand um, to try and, try and give the character some context. And um, then I'm going to use the same color, this gray color, and I think I'm going to paint the handle, or actually just his whole weapon, that color. I'm not going to worry about painting details. Anything else that's le left unpainted? Oh, his his little stone weapons. Uh, so that's where I'm going to take this bright green color and see what how that does it. So uh, we'll see. It might be a, it might be dumb. It might be cool. So he's got his dagger. I'm going to make that this bright green color. And uh, the axe, that's still a bit wet. I might wait on that. There's another stone dagger on his backpack. That's a detail that someone who didn't sculpt the model might not notice. But I did sculpt this model. So I add that, add that. Uh, I gotta wait a second for this. I'm gonna use this paintbrush to dry it off because I don't really need that gray color on there um, nicely because I'm planning on painting over it. Okay so that dried it off a bit and I'm adding green. It's funny this video is not going to teach you proper ways to like really do everything in a proper way. It's really about how painting is, shouldn't be a stressful thing. You should just sort of be able to do what you want and get something in the end that looks all right. Okay, so I added colors. Uh, I'm going to get a close-up so you can see how this model uh, is really just basic, basic stuff. So you check it out. I've got like really uh, just like coloring book style, you know, uh, just added and picked out the different tones and hues and everything on the figure. There's very little detail on there. So there's two more steps um, and they're really fun so I'm excited to show you. Alright so here we go. Um, what do I want to do first? I think I'm going to do the wash first. So this is, a, is one of the most uh, entertaining parts, especially if um, if you've never done it before, and that's the um, shades or the washes. You want to shake them up pretty good, but this is like just brings out all the detail that you you didn't bother painting. It's really quite fun, and so that's what this and the next step are all about. Is just like uh, you know, I as the sculptor, or uh, whenever you're painting any model, the sculptor does quite a bit of the work to bring make the detail there. You don't have to get in there and actually paint it uh, for the most part. You just Your job is to just bring out the detail that's already there. So um, here I've got this uh, earth shade. It's like a brown wash. Uh, this is one of my standards for like warm 
tones or like things that can come out earthy. I use like a black for metals that aren't supposed to be dirty. But um, you just sort of spread around the wash and it gets into all of the recesses and it adds tone and uh, depth to... Alright, check it out. So uh, my uh, my memory card ran out and so you didn't get to see the last part of me doing the wash, but uh, you pretty much want to make sure that it doesn't pool anywhere in too weird of a way, but you want to, to like soak into all the details. So uh, as you can see, I did... you saw it before. Um, you saw that there was no detail, and now uh, after the wash it's so red. Now, um, you can stop here, you could highlight here, um, by just like doing the same colors over it again, but I'm going to do something uh, else. I'm going to do a dry brush over this to try and just pick out the last few highlights, um, because we're doing this in like the quickest tabletop ready, like <laughs> messy, quick and dirty way, so let's do it. Um, that's the model as it stands now, and then I'm going to do a dry brush. Um, you know, a lot of people probably wouldn't do this for like a fine painted model, but uh, we're talking about doing some uh, nice tabletop quality that you can get on the table and it'll look cool and uh, enjoy the painted models that you got to enjoy a relaxing day painting. So uh, this is a makeup brush, and I find this to be a really excellent dry brush and they're very cheap. You can get them really cheap at, you know, dollar stores or whatever. Um, so what I want to do is pick out a color that's going to pretty much uh, highlight everything on there. So uh, I want to get a little bit of the gray-blue color that we had. I want to get a little bit of the light green color that we had and um, I want to add some white to make it sort of a light color and I'm going to mix this up on my palette and see what it looks like. It might, might be too weird. Can you see what I'm doing? Yeah, so I made like a gray, light gray color. Uh, now I'm going to grab some with my makeup brush and I'm going to use my paper towel to dry off my makeup brush so that there's almost nothing on there. And now um, I might test it on something. Yeah, it worked. So. Um, this is very subtle, but I'm going to apply it a lot like makeup. Just like top to bottom, I'm doing some light uh, dry brushing. And what is happening now is very subtly the edges are getting a light highlighting. And so uh, you can go in and like individually paint each of these highlights and that's going to be a really nice way to do it if you want to do a really nice display model. Um, but what I'm doing is taking no effort at all and all I'm doing is watching the detail come out in a fun way. You really want to make sure that the brush is quite dry, you want to experiment a bit to get this technique down right. But, um, but it's really quite fun. Now, I think I want a little bit more. I'm, I've gone mad with power. I'm going to add a little bit more white to get it a little bit lighter. Dry off my brush. Uh, test it on a little thing. I think that might need a little more. Alright, let's do this getting his face, so he's got like some light highlights on his face, light highlights on his scarf, and on his backpack, and on his armor and weapons and crap. Get the tip of his weapon really good so that it has some, brings out some of the sculpture. Yeah. 
there we go. Um, that's basically it. I'm going to get a little bit lighter, try and get in his belly. It's easy to overdo it. Um, I really think that you don't need to worry too much about accidentally overdoing it because um, <clears throat> when you're playing games you're going to be looking at this model from pretty far away and so um, it'll be hard to like really overdo highlights. Now the last thing I want to do um, is make sure my dry brush is clean and I'm going to go back to my big brush uh, get that white if it's still wet and uh, hit his base. I've been doing uh, making like a snowy table so some really light highlights on the base is fine, fine with me. There we go. Uh, the last thing I would do to finish this model is paint, uh, repaint the rim black. And so I'm going to do that and then I'm going to show you what the finished thing looks like. Okay, check it out. So here is the last little look at the guy. Just quickly painted the rim black on his base. Uh, that sort of just cleans it up and makes it look like the model was done on purpose, you know. See, so you can see all of that great detail that just like took no effort because it's really just uh, the base color is a wash and a little dry brush at the end. So there I guess you wouldn't know it, but um, th it's that easy to paint models. Well I hope you enjoyed this little video about how to paint models. Um, if you haven't already taken a look at Relic Blade, please do. It's really an excellent miniatures game. I really super appreciate you taking a look and uh, let me know what you think in the comments below.